Welcome to today's programme. My guests are two of my closest friends, Terry and Juanita Baker. Terry, Juanita, welcome to Facing the Canon. Good Thank to be you, John. here, John. Thank Wonderful. You. you are, Killy and I, you are two of our dearest friends and uh, we've known each other for quite a while. Where, yeah. where were you both raised and brought up? I was brought up in a village just outside of Ipswich and um, then I uh, went to school at Kesgrave School. And that's east of England for our yes, global... Yes, it is. Suffolk. 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 Yes. Yes. And yes. what about you, Juanita? Well, my parents expected me when they lived in Bermuda, hence my name, Juanita. Oh. Trouble was, I was actually born when they arrived back in northern Wales, in Merionethshire, Abergonolwyn. Only there for a short time, but uh, that's where I was. That's <laughs> where you were. Now, you've had a very significant anniversary recently and you've been married how long 60 years 60, 60 years. years yes which is called diamond, diamond. you yes. got the diamond yes and you even got a card from king charles we, we did. did yes and that's very nice. Nice. Yes, royal very nice. card yes absolutely. yes absolutely 60 years of marriage okay what advice would you give regarding marriage? I think if we maintain the little things, the big things will automatically happen. By that I mean, make sure you say goodbye to one another in the morning. Make sure you give one another a text or a phone call. The little things that you did when you were first courting. So don't ignore the minors. That's right. And the majors will take... Absolutely. Will work out. Absolutely. What would you say, Terry? I would say keep going even when things are tough because you will learn from them and you'll have a better marriage when you've worked through them than you had beforehand. Nita, when we first got married, was like a, a little fire engine. She was really, really, wow. Temper. And so... Feisty. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'd never been in a home like that whatsoever. And I thought, what on earth is this? And I would, I would kind of have a giggle with her and say, she said, why do you smile? Why do you laugh at that? I said, Nate, I don't know how to deal with these things, really. This is, this is diff more difficult for me than it is you, I think. And gradually, the doors stopped slamming. The kitchen units had, you know, were OK. And so, therefore, we worked through these things together. And that, I believe, is what makes a good marriage, working things through together, not bearing them under the carpet, but looking Talking at the whole about thing. It. Yeah. Because I was brought up in a home where there were rows. And my brother and I used to say, well, they're not going to row on Christmas Day, are they? But they would. Um, so that's how I was brought up. So to me, that was normal. What would you say to our viewers who some might be struggling in their marriages now? What advice would you give them? My advice would be do not shut the door on it, but talk. I think you need to talk, get help if you need help but work through it because there will always be difficulties in every relationship. The grass may look greener somewhere else, but when you get there, it's not always as green as you think. So work through it. What would you add, Terry? Yeah, no, I would say the same. I would honestly say, keep working at it, but pray together. So many couples we've found, we found it awkward when we started praying together as a couple. And uh, I think that's an area that we need help from the Holy Spirit guidance from the word and be be involved let god be involved in all that you're doing and you will get through and have a good marriage and there's a, a saying couples who pray together stay, stay. together yes mm -hmm. yes now just out of interest what's your routine as a marriage married couple how mm -hmm. does that work with your prayer lives and your personal devotions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. both we both uh, when we get up in the morning we probably spend an hour in prayer and reading the word separately. Uh, but we always, always have a time of prayer, usually about lunchtime. And then every night when we go to bed, whether it's four in the morning, two in the morning, whatever, we have a Bible study together and we pray through the scriptures and we 
feel that this is a really good thing. So when you go off to sleep, you know that you've been in touch with uh, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So one is that you wake up mm -hmm. and then you have an hour yes. separately. Yes, we do. Then we'll come together and get breakfast. Then we sit and pray together. Uh, and I think it's so important because you do need a quiet quality time yourself and the Lord because my faith is important, Terry's faith is important, our joint faith is important. So you've got to keep feeding yourself on the Word of God as well. So I 100% agree that we must keep seeking the Lord and throughout the day actually. It's talking to the Lord, isn't it? As you're, okay, I ask him to help me find a car park space I can get into, John, mm. all right? Yeah. All sorts of things like that. You talk to the Lord as you go throughout your day. Now, you were not brought up as Christians. No. no we so when not. did, Terry, when did you encounter Jesus? How did that happen? When I was an apprentice, um, a guy called Roger, he was above me and several other apprentices, and he used to share the gospel with us every day, the love of Christ. And I was not interested. I said, for three years, don't keep on with this because I'm not interested. Then they had a special event at uh, the church, and so I went along and uh, gave my life to Christ. And how did that transform you? Yeah, it transformed me, but not as much as I thought it might. That we had no life groups, we had a prayer meeting now and again, and uh, the teaching, I think, was quite good, but it really didn't impress me too much with uh, the way in which things were yeah. organised. As you look ever. back now, yes. mm. you realise, uh, yes. I think sometimes we get given the, uh, the the bricks, the building blocks, but nobody cements them. Correct. Yes. 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 And then, of course, I went to work at the same place where Terry was the apprentice. I went there really just for six months to get some more experience before I went to Switzerland to work. I never got to Switzerland because he asked me out. And the first thing he said to me is, are you a Christian? Oh, yes, I said, I've been confirmed. And I go to church, Easter, weddings, Christmas and funerals, that sort of thing. And so I thought I was a Christian. And he took me to church twice a day on a Sunday to this little Baptist church where they preached a wonderful gospel, I'm sure. But they always used to say, now sinners come forward to repent. I used to look round looking for the sinners because I wasn't one. <laughs> I hadn't slept around, stolen, murdered anybody. So that, in my idea, was sin. And I think there's probably a lot of people out there with the wrong misconception of sin. It's just missing the mark. So when did you realise? I was 35 years old, John, and we'd done everything in life that I wanted to do virtually. I'd pulled him away from church, which I found boring. I hate to admit it. And I was seriously ill. We were skiing one day and I found a lump in my stomach. And on investigation, it proved to be a growth and the consultant on Maundy Thursday said, you'll come in on the Tuesday after Easter and I'll operate. Would you sign to let me have carte blanche, do whatever I want? And I was so afraid of living because I didn't know what I'd got to live through. And I didn't know what would happen if I died because, well, I was a Christian, wasn't I? Would I go to heaven? Uh, that I went to church on that Easter Sunday morning and bless the local church, they put a notice in the door to say the service time. So I knew the time and I went. And I just said in my heart, well, if you're real, God, I give myself to you because I've tried everything. The new dress doesn't satisfy. The holiday doesn't satisfy. There's always a little slot. And I can't cope with living because I don't know what I've got to face and I can't cope with dying. And with that, something washed over me. I was born again. I didn't know it, but I burst into tears and nobody around me noticed or they were too polite to notice. And I left that church knowing I could cope with surgery and knowing I could cope with dying or living. And he came home from league tennis he was playing that Sunday morning. He was playing for Suffolk, weren't you? And I said, you've got to come to this local church. It's all changed. It's all modern. And you did. And the rest was history, wasn't it? You came yes. back to the Lord. And that, that brought you back? That brought me back, yes. Mm. I just say, you know, things can be a struggle in life. I can remember this so clearly. When I came back to Christ, and it was communion, and when I got up out of my seat to go forward to receive communion, it was like walking through a brick wall. It was so difficult to break that which was, which was stopping me going. And as soon as I had communion, I felt free. But before that, it was really tough even to just walk forward. 
and it just that. liberated you. Yes, it did. Mm. And, then and, and what happened with you, Juanita, with the operation? Well, as he said, well, I'd know the results in six weeks. So he went away just to Norfolk, just to have some time together. And I got the all clear. And I can remember so clearly, I was going into the swimming pool in that hotel and a little voice on my shoulder said, you can give it all up now. You can give it all up now. The crutch has got you through. And, and I thought, I'm not giving it up. I've got a piece I've never, ever had before, and I'm going to go with it and move forward with it. And we did, and we got heavily involved in the church that we went to at that time. And before long, they gathered us up as new young blood, and we ended up doing things we were incapable of doing. Hmm. But from that time on, That's you it. were just From 35, I was sold out for Jesus. Sold out for yes. Jesus. Like, Jesus had become Lord of your Absolutely. life. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So ever since then, you've just been... Sold out. Tried to be. Yeah. Tried yeah. to be. Tried yeah. to be, yes. I needed to yeah. learn and grow in every area because my knowledge was nothing. Zilch. And before long, we ended up... I think it was Mission England. 1984. And we, and yes. we were almost running the church. And there I was as green as grass. So I'd got to grow and learn quickly. You are two of the most generous people I know. Oh, bless you, Thank John. You. Uh, and generosity has always been something mm -hmm. of your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It, yes. Just naturally. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, when we... When I was a brand new baby Christian and I started to read the Bible and I saw about tithing and giving and you can't outgive God, nobody taught us but the Holy Spirit. And so we decided to do it. And we decided it gave us more joy to give than to receive. And so we once gave everything we got away and the Lord said, I didn't tell you to do that. You've now got to manage for quite a while. Oh, so you actually you did give it away? We gave everything away, like, everything. When you say everything... Well, what, what we did... At we tithe at the start of the month, and then anything which we had left at the end of the month, we'd, we'd give, give away. away. There was nothing in the bank. So for... there was nothing in the bank to ride a bad time or anything. No, you just gave it so away. Gave it away. So for one year, I think we had sausages for, for every supper meal. every meal almost, because we went through a very, very tough time. But the Lord said to you, I didn't tell you yes, to did. give it all away. He said, you should ask me where you give things. Mm. And so we learned a big lesson there. Mm. But we were kids, John, you know, and you, you realise it must give God pleasure to train his Absolutely. children. Absolutely. Yes. yes, but the, how wonderful, though, that your um, generosity uh, was extravagant because we have an extravagant, extravagant God. generous God, yes. don't we? we yes. do. Now, yes. you believe in the principle of tithing. Yes, 100%. How would you explain that, Terry? I would explain it this way. If my heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ in God in the flesh, can put stars into space, he can keep his word over finances. And so I trust, I just trusted him to see us through when there's good times, when there's bad times. He didn't say you won't have times which are, you can learn through. He said you will have times with trials and tribulations. And we've had several of those, I must admit. But when it comes to finances, I believe God has just been so, so generous towards us. And we never give to receive, John. We always give because we think it's a blessing to give to people. Yes, and, and that is an important principle, isn't it, Terry? Yes. Yeah. We don't give to get we back. No, we don't. No. But in God's mercy and kindness, he sees to his sons and daughters. And the more you've practised that principle, the more you've seen the blessing oh, of God. Yes. Just yes. over and over and over. Yes. Because we are just guardians, aren't yeah, we, of students. God's time, yes. talents mm -hmm. and treasure. Yes. And I've, I've seen that mm. in you both over mm. the years, that John, you're just trying to be a good steward. Good. Thank but you. I think, this is just me, I think God was very, very generous to us not to say you should do 20% or 30%. Because I believe whatever you give from the heart, that is, be a generous giver, sow and you will reap. It's all God's and, anyway, all isn't God's it? Anyway. So you've got to be a good steward of what you have anyway. Now, you've had some health issues um, yes. over the years. Mm -hmm. 
And um, there's one of your little throwaways that Killy and I love. If you can't pray it off, cut it off. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but I, there's one occasion, Terry, when you went to see the doctor and he did all the tests and diagnosis and then said, oh, you've got this particular thing. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about that. And I'm intrigued by your response to the doctor. I think it was probably um, rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, he gave me all the tests. And when I went back to see him, he said, Terry, this, you've, this is very, very, very bad. He said, you've got a really, really, uh, what should I say, uh, your joints, etc." And so I said to him, as a Christian, he knew I was a Christian. I said, you can put the label in the coat, but I won't wear it. And that was 2002. That was two We'd started and the church yes. in the January the 27th. And that was May. And by the March... I got a lung disease and then you got this and mm -hmm. the devil was trying to snuff it out before it even started. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So there's some great little stories mm -hmm. colliding here. Okay, so uh, in the middle of you guys trying to be faithful, prospering in business, mm -hmm. property, you feel the prompting of the Lord to plant a church. <laughs> yes. Crazy, isn't it? Yes. Well, well, well we I, thought, honestly, we thought, you know, that we were used to go to the States quite a lot. Yes. Helping and working there. on the rubbish dumps in Mexico in between El Paso and Juarez. And we met some wonderful, wonderful folk over and, there. Just and amazing. I've been there you as have well. Too. Yes. Um, yes. I, I just say this. When, when Nita gave up working and I was working my butt off to keep things going, Nita came to me one, one lunchtime and said, Do you know, I'm sure the Lord is speaking to me. We should go to St. Lucia. On a holiday. Uh, on a holiday. I said, oh, Nate, I'm too busy to even think about it. Cut a long story short. She said this about three times, and I said one lunchtime, give me that phone. So I did. I phoned the agent up, and they said, a st um, travel agent, and said, this date's for St. Lucia. What have you got on offer or what have you got? She said, gosh, she said, you're ve her words were, you're very lucky. She said, there's two for the price of one on those dates. And I thought, perhaps Nita is hearing from the Lord. Yes. And so we booked it. And when we got there, the first evening, there were a couple in front of us who were Americans. We had never seen them, met them before. And we were here. They were shown to a table over there. We were shown to one here. And they were wearing crosses. And I said to Nick, when they get to coffee, I'm going to have a word with them. So I went across and I said to the guy, do those crosses mean anything to you? And he looked up and he said, buddy, they sure do. He said, Jesus Christ is my saviour. And he said, draw up. Drop a chair over coffee and let's share some coffee and testimony together. And really, that changed my life. Because, yeah, mine. what happened? Well, he really introduced me to the Holy Spirit in, a, in an amazing way. I mean, when I was filled with the Spirit, if I could say this, it was just like a booster rocket took off. It was just amazing. It was just as if God had empowered me to, you know, do things, go places, and it was so you went wonderful. deeper in the experience oh, we of his did. spirit. Much, we did, much and more. that is actually the year we met you, I believe. It was, That's right. Yes. Um, because they invited us to a conference where you were the speaker. And uh, anyway, we, we met yeah, you and, and Killy. that was called New Wine. It was. And That's where you correct. kind of drank more yes. and Absolutely. soaked mm -hmm. in the presence Absolutely. of the spirit. Absolutely. And from there then, we went down into Juarez. Yes. Uh, ministry so the and couple learning are called minister. Rick and Luann. Yes. Correct. And they invited you to Mexico. Yes. They did. They mm -hmm. did. And so we went down there with a Jesuit Catholic priest called yep. Father Rick Thomas, who's gone to be with the Lord now. And he said, you're green behind the ears, you two. You want everything like instant coffee. I will teach you and help you. And he helped us Prison. with ministering to people. Prisons. prisons yes. Etc. And And really, that was so beneficial to us. It opened our eyes mm -hmm. on healing Mm. Absolutely. So you're, you, and you actually saw healing. You actually oh. saw miracles. Absolutely. And there's a, an incredible story about uh, the um, all these families who live on the rubbish yes. dump on Christmas Day. Correct. When there was a group of Christians yes. that felt that they should go and give them Absolutely. food. Absolutely. And if anyone wanted to look at that, it's called Riva Cristo no, Rey. Viva Cristo yeah. Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. And the food multiplied. Right. Correct. Correct. And, and we've seen the beans spill out of boxes that weren't there yeah, and things like that. that. And mm. and we prayed for people in their little huts. And we prayed for them one lady healed. 
And we didn't know this because didn't we didn't speak Spanish. And we went to give for her food, which we took over and pray for them. And we prayed for this lady who was laying in bed. And she jumped out of bed and started jumping around her little place, you know, room. And so the person who was the interpreter, she said, you don't know what's happened, do you? I said, no, not a clue. She said, well, she's been bedridden for four years. Had a stroke and couldn't speak or anything. So uh, we suddenly realised you... God knows what the person wants. We just said, Lord, give them the desires of their Absolutely. heart. Absolutely. Mm. And, and there we are, she was, was healed. It. So we saw some amazing miracles quite yes. early in our Christian walk. Yeah, and obviously that inspired you. Absolutely. Uh, you, so back, you then, okay, prompted to plant a church. Yes. Um, pioneering mm. in the mm -hmm. midst of everything. Yes. Um, so then back to the story, so the doctor and then you say to him just repeat that phrase that you said to him you may i said you can put the label in the coat or the illness on the coat but i'm not wearing it so what did you mean by that i meant by that you may be able to say that is medically what i've got but i don't accept it when i read the bible Facts I'm are healed. subject to change. change. So you were in you were in a lot of pain yes. i remember mm, it loads absolutely terrible so what pain. happened well, I gradually, I was on medicine, and gradually I was able to come off the medicine. Gradually, I didn't take anything for years and years, and I was completely free of pain, totally. And I believe that was mainly due to the Lord Jesus. Yes, mm -hmm. healing you, but yeah. also you standing on God's word and Absolutely. saying, yes. I'm claiming his promises. promises. Yes, definitely, yes. And I think, John, more than claiming, proclaiming. Proclaiming. Because I think mm -hmm. that uh, the various times with illnesses, have we had things that aren't healed? Of course we have. We all see through a glass dimly. But I think it's so important to stand on God's word. If God said it, I'll believe it. I'm going to believe it. I may mm -hmm. not see it with my physical eyes, but I believe it and it will manifest. Absolutely. And we do believe still in doctors and oh, consultants. Of course we do. Of course we do. Absolutely. Well, Jesus has provided them. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And yes. Luke was a doctor. And Luke was a doctor. Yes. You know, mm. and we have lovely Christian consultants and Christian doctor friends, and we respect the work they do. But the trouble is they've only learnt what they've been taught to, so they have limited knowledge. But our Father knows everything. Mm. He does. He does. We don't, but he does. He does. I and we've know. all got a time to go. We're all going to leave this earth. Mm. And we, we just say to people, you know, if someone leaves this earth at, say, 26 or 48 and they know Jesus Christ, they've just caught an earlier bus. That's right. Yes. Yeah. We'll all end up at the same depot. Yeah, definitely. And we have to believe in the sovereignty of God, don't we? Yes, we Absolutely. do. There yes. are some people um, where their perspective is the glass is half empty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. people, the glass is half full. Mm -hmm. But your glass is overflowing. It's overflowing. overflowing. Well, it tells it's me that. Always. Oh, my cup overflows. Surely goodness Absolutely. and mercy. Absolutely. No, and I we always... believe it. And even, even when in the past, maybe when we were younger and the cupboards were bare or the bank cupboard was bare or whatever, we've still said our God provides and our cup overflows. Always. Yeah. Our cup overflows. It's got to in the word. Uh, but you've chosen to take hold of that principle. Definitely. Yes. And it's kind of reflected in your in your bodies, in your eyes. Like well, I was at the opticians this last week, and uh, it's a really nice guy, and we were chatting. And he said, "Terry, he said I want to tell you, your eyes are in better condition than what mine are." Yes. And he's probably thirty-eight or something. Yes. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. I I I actually proclaim the scripture: "My youth is renewed like the eagles." Yes. Now, when I don't feel well, I, I quote that even more mm -hmm. because I'm going to believe it. Mm. I've got a time to go. I've got a kind of time to go, but I don't really want to catch the earlier bus. No, <laughs> I'd no. like to catch the bus that's appointed for me. Absolutely. Mm. Terry, Juanita, for many of our viewers and listeners who might be struggling at the moment, uh, maybe with provision, maybe they need healing, mm. they need a miracle in their lives, what would you say to them? I would say get alongside some really lovely and I do mean this, people who would love you, people who will be there for you, people will not uh, speak against you. They will really try their utmost to see you through the problems that you're going through. And you'll stand there with them through thick and through thin. You'll be there. They need help. What would you add? And Juanita? the other thing I would say is they need to 
learn to dip into the Word of God and maybe have a notepad and take notes of verses that apply to their circumstances and to start to proclaim it, what we spoke about earlier, over their life because they're a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and God's got no favourites. God loves us all and he, he just wants the best for them and they may be going through terrible times at the moment and we know many people in the world are but God has got a plan for their lives and God wants them to see that plan fulfilled and he'll help them by the power of his Holy Spirit. Yes? Amen. One thing I don't want people to think, that's all right for them. We have had trials and tribulations. We have been through lots and lots of painful areas and painful things. Still do. Being a Christian is not a bed of roses. Being a Christian, Jesus says, count the cost. And there is a cost. And so don't please think that what we've been saying, you haven't had things come against you. I can tell you we have loads of times. Yes, yes. But it's not easy. No, the Christian life is not a cruise liner. It's it a battleship. Battle it battle is, ship, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a yeah. Yes. But despite all that, yes. you press on. Absolutely. We press all on. the time. Absolutely. All the time. Yes. Absolutely. How do I won't you give up. So as you view the future, yes. Mm -hmm. what, what are your expectations? Uh, my expectation would be, I would love to be raptured. I would love Christ to come in the last, last days. And if I look at the world today, and I think from when I grew up as a child to now, I think the world has got in a very, very difficult spot. With you look around the world at the news and you see what's going on, and you think, I really feel sorry sometimes for the youngsters who are growing up to think, wow, is this, is this what they've got to look forward to? Don't you think mankind could be much kinder, much more understanding, much more chatting things through to be able to move forward rather than wars and rumours of wars and all these things? I think we need to have much, much, much more compassion and kindness and love for others. Yes, but Jesus is on the throne. Jesus Absolutely. is on the throne, and you can't dethrone Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we're seated in heavenly places with him, aren't we? Really? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Well, I know that Jesus will come again. I'd love it to be my lifetime. I'd love to be raptured. But if not, I'm going to be there one day anyway. And within the blinking of an eye, everybody that we know and love will be there also, won't they? Mm. So I just say, Lord, you have your will and your way. I'm, Killy and I are blessed to know both you, oh. Terry and Juanita. You are both uh, an absolute tonic. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on Facing the Canon. Thank you for having us, John. John. It's been Bless a joy you. and a pleasure and a it privilege. Really is. Yeah. I hope you have enjoyed hearing a little of Terry and Juanita's story. I hope it's inspired you in your own journey of faith. Thank you so much for joining us on Facing the Canon. Please join us again. Thank you.